This is Twit. Today on the Ask the Tech Guys, Sam Abul Samet, our car guy, was on uh, talking about San Francisco, which is inundated with these self-driving Waymo and uh, cruise robo-taxis. San Franciscans have discovered that the way to disable them <laughs> is to put an orange cone on its hood. Because the vehicle <laughs> thinks, you know, oh, that's a traffic uh, safety area, and it, but it can't drive around it. <laughs> so it just stops. Uh, let me, this is a TikTok video that describes uh, this technique. And I don't know, I, I don't, we're, we're kind of distant from San Francisco. I, I did see, well, I was in the city yesterday, I did see quite a few uh, Waymos and, uh, and cruises, and they, and they do see, but see, if you just put a cone... That's <laughs> so funny. Just find a traffic cone. They're all all over the place, of course, but don't take it from anywhere important. Then gently, they say, place it on the hood, and uh, you know, as long as there's nobody in the car. Obviously, if there's a safety driver, he'll come and take it off the hood. But if if it's just driving by itself, it <laughs> that's terrible. It just a friend of mine said he almost did that the other day, but then he felt bad because it would have caused a traffic jam. <laughs> <laughs> OMG yeah that's the problem because that that uh, disabled uh, cruise is just sitting there in traffic and that we see enough of that anyway I'm, I'm sure Google and or Waymo and cruise will send a software update that you know tells it to back up really quickly and it'll fall off or whatever <laughs> wiggle wiggle the hood yeah. Add a robotic arm to take it off. Right. It's to Ben's point, though. Some people feel really like I don't know, like violated somehow because there are these like robo taxis just driving around their city, and you know, like who's responsible, who's accountable, and you know, so far there haven't been any like you know major safety. Like no one. There've been, been small ones though. There, there, hurt. there were emergency vehicles yeah. were blocked by a cruise in San Francisco some weeks ago. Uh, I was talking to a friend who lives uh, on a hilly area of San Francisco. He said, yeah, for like several weeks, a lot of, lot of self-driving vehicles, I guess they were training on the hills. Would We just were all over the place. Then there are people who live on, in San Francisco on cul-de-sacs. Uh, and because uh, the cruise vehicles follow traffic laws, you know, any, any, any human will just go, okay, I am turning left here because I'm not going down that cul-de-sac. But these vehicles go down the cul-de-sac, make a U-turn, and then come back out. So they don't make a left turn. They only make right turns. And, it, and they've been lined up in the cul-de-sac, like dozens of them <laughs> making this, this crazy turn. I think they must have fixed that because I haven't heard about that in a while. But yeah. they're not, it's not merely that, oh, the, it creeps me out. They can cause problems. But it's kind of amazing they've gotten them to work so I guess well so. Yeah. in San Francisco. Yeah. I think that the thing that I keep wondering every time, and I see them every time I go in the city for a dinner or whatever, they're just, they're, there's more of them at night. I just see them all the time. And yeah. the thing I keep thinking is like, when are they going to have these in other cities, right? Like how, how hard is it to bring this now to like every major metropolitan area? And I think that's, the fact that it hasn't happened yet is like, it's either because they're worried, you know, that there's going to be some safety issue, you know, and something bad's going to happen and it's going to shut the whole thing down. Or, you know, they've like those little edge cases in San Francisco are in every single city and they're different. And so it's just going to be so difficult to, to scale this, you know, to, to other places. They, they are in some other places. I think they're both in uh, Arizona, Phoenix, uh, Phoenix. Waymos. Yeah. Austin, Waymos. In Phoenix. Austin has some now. In fact, Austin, yeah, yeah, Waymos in LA. Yeah. A lot of local laws and those pieces, they're being cautious, right? You don't want to just like, it, you don't want to do what Bird did and just drop a whole bunch of self-driving cars. Happy driving. Oh, those scooters, you mean? Oh, those oh yeah, are which terrible. are now worth, Oh, yeah. went from what, a billion valuation to 25 billion now, yeah. just a whole nother story. Yeah. Uh, but you don't want to just drop a thing like that. You got to work with the local government, like Google and the other companies in this space and crews are much more cautious as they should be. And you, so you think they could, you think it's not, there's no tech, there's no hurdle to scaling these other than laws and, and regulations. Oh, uh, I I'm sure in some cities there's some because of very unique circumstances 
like snow is probably a very unique circumstance. Note no all the cities we talked about, Austin, others are not usually snow cities. They are warm cities that don't have a lot of snow. Snow is your biggest problem where it like cuts off all the lines and things. And rain? How about rain? I mean, they all rain in these cities. Rain is easier. You yeah. can still see the lines like you can detect right. like in three to 60 degrees. Right. It's when snow completely covers uh, like the middle lines and the side lines and like humans can kind of understand where like the edge of the road is by feel. Right. Uh, the machines, you know, that's just a much harder problem. So when you start seeing self-driving cars in the middle of winter in the Twin Cities, that's when you know the technology has done it. Right. And as, I, I as, talked to someone at Cruise. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. I, I, I was just going to say, I talked to someone at Cruise about it the other day and it was like, I, I think the message was, you know, don't underestimate how difficult it was to, to make it work in, in San Francisco uh, and, you know, how long that took and sort of how bespoke it is, I guess. Um, and I, I think, I think that's an inter- It'll be interesting to see because um, nobody wants to like, none of these companies want to just invest all that manpower in every single city. Like they want to, they want to figure out how to make it turnkey. Well, and that's important because we, we forget they need to make money in the long run. They can't, they're not just doing this just because they can, they want to make it a yeah. profitable business. And if it's prohibitively I think each expensive. New city is good. I think each new city is going to be a little bit easier that like they're going to learn right. some stuff from every new city and, and theoretically the fifth or the eighth or the 10th city is going to be a little bit easier, you know, by the time they get to smaller cities in South Dakota, it's going to be turnkey. So this is one use of AI that uh, I think probably is okay, right? It's not, this doesn't pose an existential threat to mankind. Uh, as long as you're not a cab driver. <laughs> yeah, true. It's probably bad for, although uh, I, I think about, we were talking about this uh, earlier. I think about what happened in New York City when Uber took over. It didn't get rid of cab drivers. It just meant there were far more cars in the street and, and it was worse for everybody except I guess it was probably was good for subway uh, use. Uh, it got really gridlocked for a while because of all the Ubers on the city streets. Hey, I know you're super busy, so I won't keep you long, but I wanted to tell you about a show here on the Twit Network called Tech News Weekly. You are a busy person, and uh, during your week, you may want to learn about all the tech news that's fit to, well, say, not print, here on Twit. It's Tech News Weekly. Uh, me, Micah Sargent, my co-host, Jason Howell. We talk to and about the people making and breaking the tech news, and we love the opportunity to get to share those stories with you and let the people who wrote them or broke them share them as well. So I hope you check it out every Thursday right here on Twit.